So you have 31 pairs and then it supplies most of the body there are some areas of the body that is not supplied by spinal nerves is, is the face uh, part of the neck part of the head but the other parts of the body is supplied by the, by the spinal nerves and uh, the spinal cord is divided into five different parts one is the cervical area and that is c1 to c8 so you have eight nerves there then the thoracic area and these are from t1 to t12 so you have 12 of them lumbar you have the there's five of them are there and sacral which is again five of them and coccygeal which is only one of them and uh, usually you can see it here this is uh, end of the spinal cord so it's l1 l2 this is conus medullaris and as you can see this is the cauda equina and these nerve fibers are getting longer and longer and longer as they are uh, trying to exit or trying to enter the spinal cord they are getting longer and longer and longer because the spinal cord ends around this area so what about rami um the the ventral rami okay so remember this is important ventral rami they create a network of nerves and these are called plexuses ventral rami creating a, plex, a, a, a network of nerves and they are called plexuses there's four of them cervical brachial lumbar and sacral but those ventral rami between t2 to t12 do not make any plexuses do not okay what they did what they make they are making intercostal nerves so these intercostal nerves are supplying the the anterior and lateral part of the chest and the abdomen so both sensory and motor what happens in the dorsal rami the dorsal rami are not making any plexus they are not making anything okay they are supplying the skin and the muscles of the back the dorsal rami are supplying the skin and the muscles of the back I recommend you to study each plexus separately don't study all of them together because it will be difficult to remember everything okay so the nerves of the cervical plexus is between C2 and uh, C5 okay there is a small branch of the C1 is also involved but mostly is between C2 and C4 and uh, C5 is a little bit involved also uh, the cervical plexus is divided into sensory and motor so a majority of them are sensory but there are two important uh, motor nerves also there so let's start with the first one this is called greater auricular so this is the external uh, acoustic meatus and it's supplying that area around the ear okay so the posterior aspect of the ear and the neck area supplied by greater auricular then you have the lesser occipital so the lesser occipital is uh, uh, just the back of the uh, upper neck so in the near the occipital area and also uh, this area so a little bit of the ear is supplied so superior of the ear so this area is supplied by lesser occipital then you have the transverse cervical so which is this nerve and this is supplying the anterior triangle of the neck so what is the anterior triangle so if you draw a line here in the midline something like this okay then you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle which is this area it's not shown here but it's this area and then is the lower part of the mandible so that is making the anterior triangle of the neck and this nerve is supplying the skin sensory of that area uh, another sensory is called supraclavicular so this is above the clavicle so this is the clavicle and uh, this is the uh, supraclavicular um, and that's supplying the posterior lateral side of the neck and upper part of the shoulder so this area around this area is supplied by this nerve so it's called posterior triangle of the neck okay and then is the two motor okay one is called ansa cervicalis and um, these are the muscles that are supplied by ansa cervicalis 
um, this is the Genio Hyatt so from the back of the um, Genio of the mandible all the way to Hyatt bone this is Omo Hyatt and this is the Sterno Hyatt this is the Tyra Hyatt and uh, um, Sterno Tyrite so there is a few uh, muscles uh, that are supplied by Ansa Cervicalis the one that is important one is called the, the uh, phrenic nerve this is the most important nerve in the cervical plexus because this one is supplying the diaphragm and this is the diaphragm is a, a primary inspiratory muscle so which, is, which means it's important for breathing if uh, both the diaphragm um, are um, paralyzed the person cannot breathe the person will not survive so that's that important 